and gentlemen, and welcome to another guide. Today, we're going to be looking at Baruch, who is the newest frame to come along in the line of frames from Warframe. Now, Baruch is a very unique frame. Baruch is the passer fist of frames. He takes a lot of inspiration from certain frames within the game, but it's a very unique frame in of himself because a lot of his playstyle revolves around not wanting to actually kill things. But before we get started, please remember to smash that subscribe button, press that like button, and if you feel like going that extra step further, you can come and join us on the Twitch stream and join in with these guides as we make them. We take any opportunity to get you guys involved, to get your opinions, and also get you to help shaping the way these videos end up being. Uh, you can also follow my social media with the links down in the description of the video below. Baruch comes from the Vox Solaris reputation on Fortuna. This came out with Fortuna 2.0 along with the big old orb mother fights. And this is essentially a very hard reputation to grind for as you're going to be needing to uh, use the toroids in order to gain reputation with uh, the Vox Solaris as well as doing the Fortuna 2.0 bounties as well. It is a very long old grind and you will need to do a lot of farming for this so get ready for that. The construction of Baruch is an extensive one. This is going to set you back 75,000 credits, one Orican Cell, six Calder Toroids, and three Vega Toroids. These will come from the uh, Corpus locations within Fortuna. Uh, you then are going to be set back 150 Hespazim Alloy, 2,850 Alloy Plates, 3,250 Salvage, 2,500 Ferrite, five Radiant Zodians, uh, five Marquis Thists, five Ecosynth Analyzers, and ten Entroplasma. The base stats of Baruch, as he comes in at level 30, will be 225 health, he has shielding of 300, armor of 150, uh, energy at 200, a sprint speed of 1.2, he has two regular polarities in his regular mod slots, one in his Exilus, which is actually a really awkward one. The actual polarity itself does not contribute to much in terms of your build, so it's very uh, suggested you reformer that to something else if you get the opportunity. And then one in his aura slot. Something new that we're adding into these guys from now on is a little segment called the How to Play, where we look at the overall playstyle of Baruch. Now, there are a couple of different playstyles with Baruch that I can recommend. There's a more aggressive playstyle and a more passive playstyle that dictate different builds. Now, Baruch is a very funky frame because he can dictate the pace of his fighting. You can play more aggressively where you're going to focus on keeping your one active at all times and always using as many of your abilities as possible to help uh, build up your, um, uh, your restraint or taking away your restraint. The more of your restraint you take away, the longer you're going to allow your exalted weapon to do its work. So with a more aggressive playstyle, you're going to be uh, running around, casting your, keeping your one up whilst taking all the damage from enemies, jumping into the fray, reducing your re um, your restraint, and then when it's down far enough, you're going to spam it away and then absolutely destroy everything with your four. This sort of build will focus more on power strength as well as also using the efficiency to make sure you can spam as many abilities as possible, whilst destroying the butthole of everything that may be within your mission. Uh, this 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 playstyle is extremely good for doing things like survivability missions, defense missions where you're holding down in one location. Because you're not going to be having much range with this this sort of playstyle, so you're going to be relying much more on just diving headfirst into the enemy. This sort of playstyle will work very well for low level missions and will very uh, very well scale for high level missions as well. Should you be able to build this properly with the right mods, uh, we'll look more about the modding towards the latter part of this video. But as you can see from the uh, videos that we have up here, these uh, this playstyle can work exceptionally well for when enemies are clustered up and you are the focus. And it can also work very well for then giving your allies a chance to get in and do a lot of damage as well. Adversely to that is a more defensive playstyle, where you focus more on going a bit slower. Um, Baruch's uniqueness is that his lull and his uh, three act as a form of utility. Uh, his lull is sort of like an Equinox's sleep, where you're able to put enemies to bed and um, basically execute them like you would with an Equinox. The only thing different being here is that it's a bit more efficient. It takes a little longer to kick in. However, doing your using your two not only reduces your restraint, but you're also then able to reset the alert level of the enemy around you as well. So uh, Baruch with a more defensive, stealthy playstyle could in theory be used for focus farming as well as also holding down the location and setting up kills for your allies using executions and then just holding them off from a certain area. 
you can take advantage of choke points, you can take advantage of the finishers, whilst also building up your rage. Although you're not going to be focusing on your uh, exalted blade, uh, your exalted weapon as much with this sort of playstyle, you will be setting things up for your allies, and this could, this can in theory scale much higher. Being able to disable enemies, sleeping them, whilst also remaining quite tanky is a very exceptionally useful thing to do for any team setup. So let's take a look at what Borok can actually do. Borok has a very unique looking passive. Borok's passive is called Restraint. Now, Borok's tolerance levels are dictated by how he casts his abilities. The more restraint you lose, the longer your exalted weapon will last when you cast it. Now, Restraint is a resource unique to Borok that provides up to 50% damage uh, resistance when the meter is completely depleted. So if you leave it completely depleted, you're going to be more tanky. The restraint is refilled when using your 4, meaning that you only have that duration to take advantage of the damage. Now, the amount of restraint you lose is based on how much you're using your abilities and how much you're taking advantage of the enemies around you, which again, will sort of dictate you by how much of a momentum you want in your fight. So by activating your 1 and allowing enemies to shoot you, by using your 2 to sleep enemies and using your 3 to... Uh, stun and disarm enemies, you'll then be reducing your restraint um, down to a point, and at any point at that stage you can then activate your 4 to then engage with damage. Baruch's 1 is called Elude. Elude will cause Baruch to start vibrating ominously and cause any projectile or melee attack sent towards him to pass right through him. Initially, this starts in front of him with an angle of 180 degrees, so anything within 180 degrees in front of you will allow that those attacks to then pass through you, relative to the direction that Baruch is facing. Um, now, the evasion angle is affected by ability range. Once you hit 200%, you will have a 360 uh, radius of coverage, allowing any bullet from any angle to then travel through you. So let me just show you what I mean by this. So if I jump into these dudes here, You'll see that the bullets are just traveling directly through me, not even inflicting any damage. And uh, this is a very good tanky ability that allows you to stay, stay very survivable. Um, the energy drain is affected by uh, power efficiency. So modding more efficiency will lower the drain uh, cost. The casting speed of this is also affected by um, natural talent. So if you do put natural talent on, activating this becomes much quicker. And after attacking, there is a temporary... Uh, delay of 0.2 seconds where you can in theory take damage again but that does take uh that, that's not really too relevant um there is some synergy with this ability as well while elude is active the seeking range of desolate hand daggers is doubled so you want to be combining this with your other abilities as well having this active at any given time is always advisable because at the same time this also again reduces your restraint allowing you to stay in your um your four much longer Lull is Baruch's 2. Lull, much like Equinox's sleep, acts very similarly. Baruch casts a wave of over an area of 25 meters that lingers for, lingers for 5 seconds. Enemies within this area or within sight of Baruch's presence will then enter and become gradually put to sleep. And it, this will initially act as a slow and then end in a sleep and the sleep lasts for 25 seconds. Sleeping enemies awaken early when damaged, much like Equinox's suffering uh, a disorientation for a brief moment once awakened, and along with that, they gain a form of amnesia, kind of like if you try to ignore what's happening on the internet currently, uh, where they forget you even exist, and their alertness levels are... Re the range of this is affected by ability range, so the more range you uh, use, the wider, of, uh, bigger of an area you can put to sleep. Uh, the sleep duration is affected by uh, sleep duration. Uh, the casting speed is affected by natural talent and speed drift. Sleeping enemies are open to melee finishers, so if we put these dudes to sleep a moment, you'll see what I mean. Go to sleep, go to sleep, little darling, go to sleep. So it's a very good way of setting up enemies for your allies and yourself to be able to kill. Um, enemies that awaken early from damage, uh, from damage while still inside the lull will be put back to sleep if they remain in the lull. Damage dealt by desolating hand daggers does not awaken them, so if you use your three, you'll see that they'll still remain asleep. So very useful. Very cool, Baruch. Very cool. Now, the way I personally like using this ability is in chokes. Causing enemies to uh, be funneled into a small area will allow you to uh, make the best use of this ability. However, if you're building range, even in a choke, this, isn't gonna, this is going to affect a large amount of enemies. 
But if there's a, uh, a narrow funnel that you can use to put enemies to sleep, then take advantage of the environment that you have around you, because that will allow you to take advantage of the lull. And if you feel as though you're trying to set up kills for your allies, or you're trying to tone down the uh, the momentum of the fight, then lull can also be used to um, generate a moment of respite for your team to recover and get each other up if need be. Desolate Hands is Baruch's free. Much like Loki's Disarm, this acts as a form of support that can give you a bit more room to do what you gotta do, whilst also disarming your opponent. Baruch essentially summons a ring of 8 levitating energy daggers around him that will passively provide him with a 80% damage reduction. The dagger will seek enemies within a 4 meter and disarm them, consuming a dagger every time and dealing 250 damage uh, to any enemy within 3 meters. The damage and number of daggers are affected by ability strength, while the reduction is indirectly affected through the number of daggers. Damage reduction unfortunately cannot exceed more than 90%. Uh, the seek and explosion range are affected by ability range, and the damage reduction value is the percent damage reduction with all daggers equipped. For example, a Baruch with a rank 3 Desolate Hand will have 80% damage reduction when all 8 daggers are active, meaning each dagger provides 10% damage reduction. So if you want to put that calculation, just bear in mind the damage reduction for this ability is divided evenly between each dagger you have. The more daggers, the more mitigation, but the more it is divided between, evenly between them. While active, this ability can also seek out allies and give them damage reduction as well. However, it will always prioritize enemies to attack instead. So if you want to be able to give your allies some defensive capabilities, it's also a good utility asset for your allies to gain damage reduction as well. So essentially, as I mentioned earlier, Baruch has the capability of being a jack of all trades in this sort of situation. Not to mention seeing floaty daggers is awfully cool. Very cool, Baruch. Very cool. Serene Storm is Baruch's coup de gras, the ultimate of ultimates. Much like uh, Excalibur's exalted blade and all these other exalted weapons, this is a separately moddable weapon that Baruch has asset, uh, a access, access to. You are able to use this once you have uh, reduced your restraint enough to be able to cast it. Now, much like uh, any of the other exalted weapons, this is a very powerful ability. So once you've gone through the process of using all the other abilities, reducing your restraint, you can then unleash the Beast of Baruch. Once activated, you will gain access to a variety of different uh, execution type abilities, as well as also a different uh, flow of attack types. The damage is distributed evenly that this deals is distributed evenly between puncture, slash, and impact. The normal attacks without mods will deal 250 damage to anyone within 2 meters. Uh, the war attacks and slide attacks will inflict 750 damage for each strike. Aerial attacks will inflict 500 damage. Slam attacks, where you jump in the air and land on the ground like so, will deal 300 damage to anyone within 5 meters. And the physical punches when you're up against an enemy have the chance of disarming as well. The attacks and energy waves have a 200% crit chance, multiplier with a 50% critical chance, as well as a 10% status chance as a default. Uh, even though the weapons themselves say zero, the actual waves do have a status chance. The damage of this is affected by ability strength and your uh, combo multiplier. Most mods and buffs uh, will affect this uh, ability as well as the damage therein. So bringing things like condition overload, modded uh, pressure point will all add to the damage of this. While this ability is active, Baruch will also gain a 25% damage mitigation on top of everything else he's generating. And... Whilst this is active, it will begin refilling his uh, restraint bar. Now, the way I personally love using this is to get myself down below 50% of my restraint first. That way you can take advantage of the fact that Baruch has the ability, as I said earlier, to take his restraint down even whilst in this mode. So if you notice that your restraint is going down low, you would activate your 2, you'd activate your 3. Trying to keep your 1 active as well is also a nice way of passively degrading your restraint as well. And as mentioned earlier, this is very easy. It is very easy to stay within this mode for very prolonged periods of time. The damage this does is not um, as amazing as, say, for example, Excalibur's Exalted Blade, but the AoE capability of this is incredibly potent. For low-level missions, this is phenomenal. And the scalability of this, based on how you mod, can easily take out enemies of up to level 150 without too much of an issue. So depending on how you mod, this ability is fundamentally one of the funnest of any of the Exalted Blades, in my personal opinion at least. Last but not least, we're going to take a quick look at some builds. Now, bearing in mind, Baruch is very early days and he is subject to change. 
Uh, as we saw with Garuda, they changed her within the first two weeks of her being out. So if Gar if Farouk does end up changing, I will maybe make an update if the change is big enough. But um, if it's not, then I'll just keep it as it is. So the first build I'd recommend, this one. This is going to focus more on utilizing your four along with keeping your elude up as long as possible and playing quite aggressively. Uh, you have as much power strength on there as possible to add into the um, potency of your four. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the... Um, the polarity of your Exos slot is really annoying. It's like, it's not designed for anything that Baruch is good for. So it, my recommendation, and it's something I didn't do, is to change that polarity as soon as possible. Because that is going to uh, make be no end of hassle for you. Um, most builds that I found with Baruch only need about two former, maybe three at a push. Uh, with this build, you want to focus on as much power as possible. A little bit of vitality can go a nice way. Um, you could, in theory, change this for anything. Especially seeing as Baruch has a naturally quite large uh, energy pool, you could, in theory, put quick thinking on there as well. Um, you've got a little bit of range to try and take advantage of your uh, lull so that you can put as many enemies to sleep as possible, thus reducing your um, restraint. Armored Agility is something I personally like for that little bit of extra movement speed so that you can basically beat the crap out of anyone that comes near you and just move quicker. Um... The range, again, it's not 100% needed. I would actually remove overextended in place of something else for survivability, just to get a bit of extra power strength on there. But for the sake of range and um, making sure that you're able to keep that restraint down, sometimes sacrificing a little bit of power strength can be quite nice, but all of these mods can be changed around to however you want. Overextended is probably the thing I put on there just for doing more open maps. Uh, the second build that I would go for, this one focuses more on his uh, 2 and 3 and playing a bit more passively. Uh, focusing more on duration to keep enemies uh, asleep for longer. Um, you never really need to build defensively with Baruch, seeing as you're never really getting hit in the first place, and he has a lot of natural inbuilt mitigation as it is. Uh, putting some mitigation on there, some more health can be nice. It's entirely up to you, though. Uh, so as you can see, we've gone a lot more with uh, duration as well as uh, range. Uh, there's a little bit of power strength on there just to take advantage of um, when you do use your four and to add a tiny little bit more damage to your three as well. Um, if you do have arcane energize, this can be very useful for making sure you maintain your uh, serene storm as much as possible. In terms of Desert Wind itself, now Desert Wind is for the most part a crit based weapon itself, bearing in mind that the actual waves that he fires have their own damage types as well, but it's worth realising that the Desert Wind itself is a crit based weapon. Um, you want to take advantage of that with as much raw crit damage as possible, and building for an element is always quite nice. I am testing the idea of Condition Overhead, I personally find it to be quite good, especially when you're in a group with, uh, with other people. Having other people dealing that base, that uh, those status effects to boost your overall damage, super nice. Uh, Berserker could in theory be replaced with Fury if you wish. Bearing in mind again, you do gain benefits from mods such as Condition Overload, like Fury as Berserker. The ones that definitely don't work though, Blood Rush, um, anything that is usually inv involved with spin to win mechanics. Um, I would recommend checking the wiki to double check to make sure which mods do and do not work though. This build for me, it is hands down easily killing level 155 Grenier Soldiers, as well as uh, Infested. Uh, this one might suffer a little bit against Corpus, but it's worth, it'll still do handily at most levels. And that's it! Hopefully this guide has been somewhat informative for you. I feel like I'm getting a lot better with these guides now, especially with the editing and the uh, cinematicness of them and getting more relevant information in there, hopefully. So if this guide has been helped you, please leave a like, share it to your friends, tell your family, get, share it to your pet goldfish if you wish, and maybe come and join us in our Twitch stream next time. I hope we see you again in the next video. Ta-ra!